Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go till the garden. It has been dry for about four days and I think that the ground is good enough we can start tilling and maybe even plant today. You guys come along for the ride. Tony's Tractor Adventure. Well the tiller's on, now it's time to till the garden. And this time we're gonna try something different. We're gonna till downhill because the guard or this tiller is a uh, forward turning tiller so it throws the dirt backwards. So as we go down the hill, we're hoping to continue to throw the dirt back up the hill. Uh, it looks to me like every time I till downhill, I'm throwing the dirt back up about nine inches uh, that way, back uphill. So if I till this three or four times this year, I can get a lot of the topsoil that has worked its way down back towards the top of this, of this garden. Ground's still pretty mu uh, muddy. Yeah, we're really muddy. All right, we got the first tilling of the garden done, and it done pretty good. As you can look out here and see, the the uh, it's a lot drier, obviously, at the top of the hill than it is at the bottom. But we'll we got it turned over here, and now we'll let it dry, and then we'll come back and till it. Maybe uh, maybe about two more, three more hours, we'll come back and till it again. We've got a pretty good breeze today, so it should be drying pretty fast. The other day we were out here tilling with the uh, T264 and you can see we've tilled the garden for its first tilling of the year, but it was pretty wet. So over the last few days, we've had a lot of rain. I say the last few days, uh, we had three inches of rain over a period of four days. And now we've had about, oh, let's see, about two and a half, three days of sunshine and wind. And today we're gonna fill up the uh, spreader here. We're gonna put fertilizer. Uh, we're gonna put, uh, and put lime down and then we're gonna re-till and maybe get some planting in this afternoon. All right, this spreader is made for a lawnmower. The controls are back here, so I'll have to get Tanya to turn this thing on and off. It's not really made it made for a tractor. The tractor has a spreader that's operated by the PTO, uh, but this is what we got and this is what we're gonna use. So I had to kind of get ingenious here and I put, a, I put a, an adapter on and then put a trailer, you know, class three trailer hitch on so I'd have something to, to pull this thing behind. And I've got my three-point hitch low enough that it's pretty much gonna have the spreader level. This thing says it's rated at 80 pounds or 85 pounds of uh, fertilizer and seed, whatever. So we're gonna, we're gonna see if it's what it's made of. It's gonna be 80 pounds right here. All right, Tanya's gonna turn the fertilizer on because I can't reach it. And now we should be ready. May have to adjust it, we'll see. It's done a pretty good job. We're not gonna go real fast. Bottom part of the garden still a little bit, a little bit muddy. Gizmo dog, he's all interested in it. Gizmo doggy.
right, now we're gonna put some lime out. I got three bags of lime. So take the acidic, or the acid out of your soil, make it less acidic, I guess is how you say it. I took horticulture in high school. <laughs> There's a garden lime you can put down. I've always used the pellet lime. I think it, it throws better and it makes it more even. Uh, as far as I know, it's the same stuff. Lime is lime, but the pellets just seem to do better in this little spreader. Let it overload it now. We just finished uh, spreading the fertilizer. We put uh, 80 pounds of fertilizer and 120 pounds of lime on the garden. Uh, it's still really wet. Probably gonna wait one more day before we till. Uh, so this will just sit out here and let the sun dry this out one more day. So put the tractor over here out of the way and we'll come back at it tomorrow. All right, the day has come. We seen the other day where we tilled the garden. Uh, as you look at the garden now, we, I tilled it this morning and you can see the texture is really good and it's dry. Uh, we have had so much rain. Finally, finally, it's dry enough to plant. Today's the day, let's get to it. This is one of the beautiful things about having a little small tractor like this is your bucket. You're gonna have it out here anyway, so use it as a bucket, instead of carrying everything out by hand, put everything in your front bucket, carry it to the garden. I built this planter, I guess about three years ago. Uh, it's made out of an earthway planter. I used uh, the steel, I just basically made an identical uh, planter frame. They use aluminum, I made it steel, put a spring loaded deal in here. And this thing has worked really good for garden planting. This planter has uh, got the different plates. I've got all of the plates. And this one right here is the beets, okra, Swiss chard, uh, plate right here and I've already we're gonna plant okra the first go around so let's uh, we'll use this one and then I've got all of the other ones too so basically all you do is you just set this dude in here like this lock it into place and you're ready to plant all right here's our first bag it's crimson spineless okra I find that if we put all of it in here, uh, it seems to pick up better. So we'll go ahead and, we're not gonna use that many, but I put it all in there and whatever we don't use, we'll put back in the bag for next year. All right, the seed picks up here and it goes down this tube uh, right here and drops in. And we can set this, uh, this cutter, if you will, uh, an inch below. Right now we're gonna be going down an inch and we can adjust this and go up and down. So basically, uh, let's go ahead and work it over there. Perfect. All right, we're ready. Let's go plant. One row of okra. We may have to set up the planter. I did last year. Yeah, we're gonna set up the planter. There we go. Oh. A bit more. All right, we're going to have to adjust the top length. What we're going to do here is we're going to break this free. 
and I'm going to make the top link a little bit longer so we can put more down pressure on the back of the planter here so that the wheels are you see the back wheel sinking into the ground so now the back wheel is going to put as much pressure as the front wheel and then we'll tighten this back up it's just something you learn I, last year when we did it I, I played with it more and more and more until I got a kind of a little you know you, you learn it's in once you get it set up each time you plant and we can plant the whole garden now and it'll be set up right for the whole garden uh, so each year you're going to have to set it up as far as basically front to back and then I also take my three-point hitch and I this planter seems to do better with it tilted to the right a little bit so that the seeds fall down to the, the what I'm going to call the picker upper. All right, if you're going to do this, go ahead and buy the extra plate. This thing comes with like, I think, two or three plates. Uh, I went ahead and bought the kit so I can plant pretty much anything you want to in the garden by seed. Uh, and it's not that much expensive. If you're going to spend the time to buy, even to buy one to push, or if you're going to build one like this, take the time to buy this. Let's see, beans, radishes, lettuce, sweet corn. All right, I got uh, sweet corn. It's Bilicious Hybrid. Some people don't like it, but I tell you what, it's done really good. It's the same depth as okra, planted at one inch, uh, nine inch spaces. And this thing with uh, spacers, it does that automatically. So you don't have to really worry about that. You just make sure that you're gonna plant one inch down. And uh, again, I put the whole package in there because I find that the, you know, the corn or the, the planter doesn't skip if it's full. And it's easy to pour that back in here. How many are we all right, we only planted one row of okra. It's a big, long row, and once it makes, uh, it starts making. It never quits making until it freezes. If you keep cutting it off when it's young, it'll keep making and it'll keep making and it'll keep making. Even when it's dry, it actually likes the hot heat. So this okra will make for one row of okra will keep our entire family uh, in okra. Now corn, on the other hand, what it makes is what it makes. So we're going to plant three big rolls of corn. And you know that that'll be a lot of corn in the freezer uh, for at least for the rest of this year and maybe some of next year, and we'll share it with our family as well. So what we're going to do here is we bring the planter back or the tractor back down. We're going to run the the left side wheels right down this tr the old track from the first row. So that way we'll keep our rows equally spaced as we go across, and uh, it'll it'll just make better rows. One thing our, our, our garden will do is our garden will grow some grass. So what we're going to do this year is once the, the crops start popping up, we're going to lay land, uh, landscape uh, cloth in between the, the crop and staple it down. Look at these big long staples, steel staples we're going to put in the ground to hold it down and try that this year to keep the grass from coming up through so we can go through the whole year and be organic. Now we'll still have to pick out a little bit uh, in between here and there but it should cut down a lot on the amount of uh, grass and weeds that we have to pull out of here.
All right, we still have a lot of uh, corn left, but uh, we went ahead and went with uh, uh, four rows instead of three because the, the corn went a lot further than I really anticipated. We don't do this but once a year, so I don't really know exactly how much. I just pour a big bag in here and go. And this is the first time that we've planted our corn this way, the long way of the garden. Normally, in the past, we've been going this way. It took us four years to figure out this was the better way to do it. All right, here we go. There's the bean right there. We'll do beans next. I seen it here a while ago. What is it? Popcorn. We need to plant some popcorn. All right, here we get this corn plate off. Just flips over. There's a little pole where you put your finger in, push it, you push it across right here. So you push it over. And this is the beans. Now, notice the difference in the spacing here. That's what's really important. The closer these are together, the closer they're planted to, or, or in the aisle. And uh, the corn is supposed to be, I think, what, nine inches apart, and that's the reason they're spaced so far apart. So we drop the corn every nine inches. And the beans, it's set up for beans. So pretty ingenious little system. And uh, you, know, you couldn't plant a whole field of this stuff with this, with this planter. Uh, it obviously would break it, but uh, for a garden, I mean, I, this is, like I said, this is our third year, uh, and I pushed the whole garden with it the, the first year or that we had it. This is the third year it's been on the back of the tractor. So the first year, we just pushed it with our, by hand. So this is actually four years old. All right, this is the uh, Burpees Garden uh, garden bean. It's just a green bean. It's a Burpees Stringless uh, Green Pod. I hate the stringed beans. Uh, when you go, to, I just want to snap them and then can them. I hate pulling that string off, and these don't have that. It makes canning so much faster. All right, we're going to test this thing real quick, make sure that it's... Oh, there you go. Look at there. I feel comfortable with that. All right, we got the fourth row finished over here and I could tell as we are coming uh, up there, I'm watching the beans, and uh, at the very last of the row, we started skipping, and that's because we just got a couple of beans left in here. And when, you know, it's it's a flaw, I guess you could say, with this planter. If you get low of beans, it doesn't want to pick them up. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to plant potatoes, and I, I don't have a healer. I'm going to get one. Eventually, I've been saying it for like three or four years. And last year is the first year we planted potatoes, and they did really good. Uh, so we're going to plant on again this year, but all I'm going to do is take this planter and go through and use it to drag a line So we know where to come back and plant the uh, The potatoes every 15 it says every 12 to 15 inches apart three to five inches down uh, I'm against manual labor. So Tanya's going to do that As my garden tool what I'm going to use Hank Hamilton would be proud we fixed uh, about four or five pieces of equipment that wouldn't start with a crescent wrench and a screwdriver and uh, we're out here gardening and we're both uh, too lazy to go in the house to get a hoe. And uh, so we just, she, she said, I'm gonna use a crescent wrench. I thought, well, Hank would be uh, uh, be happy with that. Said to three to five inches under, ever 12 to 15 inches. We're just gonna add the dirt on top of it. That's all normally I'd do. If I had a healer, I'd just lay them out in that little trench I dug and then come back with a healer and cover them up. I wonder if anybody's ever used a crescent wrench to uh, plant potatoes before. This could be like a Guinness World Record. There's a lot of ways to plant potatoes. I've seen people say, you know, which way you put the eye up and which way the potato goes. And, you know, I've uh, we've grown potatoes a lot throughout the years. And I really, we just chunk them in the hole and and they've always grow potatoes and so i don't know how what all that really means all right we got the radish seeds put in the planter i got the plate put on it and because the radish seeds are so small what i do is i take the planter and really tilt it over to the right so it looks kind of weird when you're planting but what it does is it causes the seed to roll down to the plate and they get picked up better also with the radishes 
I'm going to go really, really slow. All right, now uh, Tanya is planting uh, red onions. So we're gonna have a good stand of red onions before this is all said and done. She's using her trusty crescent wrench again, the uh, garden tool of choice. My two buddies right there. Hey, we're going to be planting some watermelons now. Tony got two different kinds of sorts of them. So this is the first one. It's called Watermelon Grims and Sweet. So I'll be doing the labor work and he'll be watching and video recording me. Hey, where are you from? I'm originally from Germany, so excuse my not saying some words properly. I appreciate that. <laughs> no hard comments, please. All right, she planted, planted peppers up to this point and uh, Gizmo was marking the spot. He's been trying to help. Good move. Well, the way we're planting these is the tractor kind of mounded it up for us when we went rent through Gizmo's trying to help. We're putting three seeds uh, and then going down about, uh, oh, I, I guess about uh, 15 inches and planting three more seeds and doing the same thing over and over again. So three seeds, they just go down an inch deep. You can make this all elaborate. I've seen people do, uh, you know, make these big mounds and I don't know. We we've done them like this. Yeah, we've done it like this for the last few years. We made good watermelons. Alrighty, we're finished for the day, and uh, we got all the planting done. What we was going to do today, tomorrow we're going to get a couple of tomato plants and maybe a couple of squash. And uh, I would think the garden is ready to grow and uh, starting to get some produce. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting some scraps and leftovers for my chickens that we're going to be raising. And there'll be some more different videos. And while we do this here, Gizmo is just chilling out. And here's Tony sitting on his tractor, no manual labor. No manual labor. Hey everyone, we went back to the store and got some more plants. Uh, we have not a green, we don't have a greenhouse, so we got uh, some starter plants to put into the ground. And we got uh, three better boys tomatoes, three smaller ones, uh, different kinds of more cherry tomatoes. And we got some plants to put in the ground. So um, today I have a garden tool. And I have. You're not going to use the crescent wrench? No, no crescent wrench today. And I got some gloves today, so I don't get it under my fingernails too bad today. So, well, come on along and um, let's go plant. All right, well, I got all my plants over here, and I'm going to find my spot now where I'm going to put the tomatoes plants. And I want them close to enough for me to be able to reach to them easier than that trying to go through a big pile of grass growing whatever so it's easier for me to pick them that way so I'm going to go ahead and place them where I want them. Ow! How'd that feel Gizmo? Just hit Gizmo on the head poor thing. You squeeze the bottom of the container so it kind of loosens up the dirt around it so when you pull it out it's not going to hurt the plant. That's something a gardener told me one time to do. Well, we got them all planted in. I made sure they had plenty of space in between and everything and uh, packed them up pretty well. So all of them now is uh, Mother Nature take cores of it and I will give it a good, some good watering before we go in. So it makes sure it has lots of water first so it can get a good start growing. So well, these are the tomatoes and to the next one. Well, we got all the tomatoes planted in now, so these are the ones I have left to plant. Um, instead of going through every details with us, what I got here, I will keep you updated when they start growing, and I will let you know what's going on with them. Um, just uh, keep 